Best bets, as is tradition, we start with last week's winners first. Two winners last week, but Eric, your pick was just, of all the no sweats this year, yours is going to be right up at the top. So honors will go to you for this week's best bet. Uh, You won on a total last week, and you're going back to another total this week. Yeah, this is, uh, by the way, I wish I could like add up all those cover probabilities and just Distribute them to all my other plays this year, but that's not how it works. Um, I'm going to go with Denver, Los Angeles under here, um, number at 44. Uh, I make a good out out to minus uh, 120. I think that um, look, I this is sort of like two different types of quarterbacks who kind of get the same thing accomplished. Russell Wilson's the you know 13 of 21 for 176, uh, and you know a, a touchdown or two. Um, whereas Herbert's like 37 to 44 for 240, uh, and you get sort of the same outcome. Both of these offenses are pretty inept if you don't have turnovers. Uh, I think both defenses, in the case of Los Angeles, for example, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to create them. I think in the case of Denver, you're seeing that regression there. Uh, And to me, I think that this number is just a tick too high. I think both coaching staffs as well. Sean Payton's usually decent at the in-game stuff. He hasn't been as good this year. Brandon Staley, uh, I think uh, the media has – uh, you know, uh, you know, basically bullied him into not making any plus EV moves. So this is a game where I look at that total and it's just, to me, uh, a shade too high. Uh, and so I'm going to go with under here in the Chargers-Broncos game. All right, Eric, going back to a Chargers under, hopefully it's as sweat-free as last week was against the Patriots. I'm going to go up here second. I'm going to go with a side and I'm going to compete against an early market release although this is going to be at a a very different number at this point. Uh, I'm going to take the Las Vegas Raiders getting three points at home to the Minnesota Vikings. I'm playing plus three minus 107 currently at Pinnacle. I'd play that all the way up to plus three minus 118. Needless to say, my number is short of this, uh, but I, I, I like to profile quarterbacks, what they're specifically good at. I know a lot is being made of Aiden O'Connell, and how he's probably going to struggle against this Minnesota Vikings defense that blitzes a lot because he has poor numbers, poor PFF grades against the blitz. And that's true, but I do think that the way that Minnesota plays defense, some of that will be offset. If you look at Aiden O'Connell this year, he's going to succeed against teams that play a lot of cover two and a lot of cover three. He tends to struggle against teams that have heavy man looks. And you look at what Minnesota does on defense, they can't play a ton of man because they don't have great corners. 25th in the league in terms of man coverage. They lead the league in terms of cover two. They're right there with the Chicago Bears. And they play top 10 rate of cover three as well. So I don't think this is just like a full Vikings defense shuts down the Raiders offense. On top of that, we've seen an emergence of the running game for the Raiders as well in recent weeks, which I think is going to help the young quarterback here. On the other side of things, obviously Justin Jefferson is back. I'm not an idiot. I put it into my number, but honestly, I think I'm maybe even overcompensating for him being back with my number as well, which would give me even more room on the Raiders in this game. Josh Dobbs gets the start. And while Aiden O'Connell has some very specific tendencies where he's good or bad, Josh Dobbs, very similar. Dobbs, great against man coverage. He's great against cover one. A lot of the reason why is he can use his legs against those types of defenses, defensive backs, turn their back to the quarterback. Guess what Josh Dobbs is going to do? He's going to take off. But he has struggled mightily, not only this year, previous starts as well in his career, dating back to last year, where he faces heavy zone defenses, whether that's cover two, cover three, quarters defenses. And we look at the Raiders, they're above average in all of those this year. They just don't want to give up the big play. So I just think that this number is a little bit too much. I, I, I can't quite get to this point, even with Justin Jefferson emerging. Las Vegas Raiders, plus three, minus 107. Good all the way up to minus 118 if this does steam out in real time. All right, keep it moving here. Suma, by virtue of having a slightly better record than Hitman, I have to say it. Just, just Hitman wasn't Suma's, on this show, I'm Suma. Suma's best friend right now. I'm taking all the crap off of Suma this year. Suma, it's on you. Uh, you're going to the same game that Eric did but you're looking at a different bet in that game. Yes, I'm looking to back the uh, Raw team, Denver Broncos, plus three, minus 121 at Pinnacle right now. If you are not 
being able to, to get a, a plus three in that range, two and a half around evenish is also good. Um, I'm somewhat down on the on the charters. I think that the Denver Broncos are going to have a, a decent matchup here. The way that Sean Payton tries to stress opposing defenses with like early down runs, uh, Russell, uh, getting Russell Wilson on the move, dump offs, uh, um, short passes into the flats will put a lot of stress on, stress on Eric Kendricks and Kenneth Murray, in my opinion. I think that, that, that Denver should be able to control the, the line of scrimmage uh, when running the ball. And then if there's one defense that's very susceptible to these play action shots off of the run game, it's probably Brandon Staley's defense. So I think that the, the Broncos offense will have a, a decent matchup. And on the other side, ongoing theme with the Chargers, they would have a decent matchup if they were able to run the ball. They cannot run the ball at all. Bottom, th uh, bottom three, a rushing offense, even against a, um, a bad uh, Denver rushing defense, I don't expect them to get anything or don't expect them to get a lot going on the ground. And then it will be on Justin Herbert with one super reliable receiver against a Denver pass defense that that got a a little bit better. Uh, Patrick Sertain um, came back into the game, so I'm not concerned about his uh, availability. And right now, I, I just simply trust the Denver Broncos a little bit more. I think that they have a, a higher floor and the way they uh, try to attack defenses should be good enough to uh, make this a very competitive game and uh, hopefully sneak out a win. All right. Suma taking the Broncos as underdogs in this game, but the moment everyone's been waiting for at this point. All the faders have been waiting for, but you're going to show them Hitman this week. That if they they fade you again, it's one too many times. Because this week, a winner is coming. It's a side. It's Monday Night Football. Who's it going to be and why? What I'm waiting for is to give out a best bet and then have the market steam the other way in real time. <laughs> that, that would be fun. If someone wants to mess with us, that would be funny. But I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers minus six and a half. So Green Bay is by far my most upgraded team over recent weeks. I think that they're coming to, they're looking like the team that we expected in the preseason that had all this hype around them, maybe even a little bit better than what we were expecting. Jordan Love over the last five weeks is third in EPA per play. He's seventh in yards per attempt. He's fifth in success rate. Green Bay's EPA per drive against a good Kansas City defense was the fifth best for any team all season. So I think that Green Bay is the offense. I've been bumping every single week. They're likely getting healthier on defense. And then you look at the Giants. They're coming off a pretty fraudulent two wins, in my opinion. They had a six to zero turnover edge against Washington. Against the Patriots, they had 10 first downs. This is still a team that closed as four and a half point underdogs at home to those New England Patriots. I just haven't upgraded them much despite the two wins. I mean, Danny DeVito in those games, despite having a winning or neutral neutral game script, still took 15 sacks. He's still a terrible quarterback. Listen, if Tyrod Taylor was the quarterback, I think this number would be correct. But with DeVito at quarterback and Green Bay laying under a touchdown, I, I think that it has value. And the one last thing is Suma. I need to hear it one time from you in your German accent. Who do we never bet on? Never De Vito. <laughs> there we go. Suma said that. I think his first start against the Cowboys, it stuck with me as I bet Green Bay. So as Suma says, never De Vito. <laughs>